What's going on? I want to say thank you to the people who bought training and shout out to the Nerd Tribe. And thank you to the folks who are about to buy training. I was doing some research and home ownership sits at about 65% of America owns homes and 35% of America rents homes. Now, what was hard to decipher was how many of these homes are owned by real estate investors and corporations? That was hard information to get down. But anyway, you slice it, home ownership is starting to decline because it is getting harder and harder for the average person to afford a home. And this is something else too. In this turbulent real estate market, I know a few real estate investors and I know one who recently got a trash property. I know another one who was in the Airbnb space who has liquidated. They started off with 20 properties and they sold the bulk, the bulk of them when interest rates were low. So they were able to move a lot of these properties. I think they're sitting on two or three at the moment. But the real estate trapper did a video that I can echo is the average real estate investor is losing money in these markets because this kind of goes back to the overall home ownership rate. Um, it's like I said, it's hard to figure out how many of these homes are owned by corporations and real estate investors because typically I believe the average real estate investor owns only one to two homes. That's where the bulk of real estate investors are. And then it's a very small percentage that gets to five, 10, 20, 30 homes. That, that really starts to come way, way down. But real estate is super funky right now. And with that 65% ownership rate, and with the lack of housing, because if you're watching the community section, I am posting, like I found another one today, a fully furnished house in the middle of the hood. And they want $3,500 for this 1,200 square foot fully furnished house that literally has boarded up houses on the same street. And I'm just sitting there like, who what what is going on in their minds because personally i would never rent a house in the neighborhood with several boarded up houses just wouldn't do it uh because i lived in the neighborhood with several boarded up houses and these boarded up houses draw a certain type of element squatters <laughs> drug addicts prostitutes so it's not good, but the real estate market is funky. It's very, very funky right now. And what I expect to happen, because even with surging interest rates, even with um, builders building houses, even with Airbnb people bailing out the Airbnb space, I don't think that real estate prices are going to collapse or crash to the multitude that they did in 2006, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I don't think we're gonna see a repeat of that. Now, and there are certain areas where real, real estate prices like surge like crazy. And in these areas, you will see a correction of those prices, but I don't see an overall collapse, I just don't because number one, it's really hard for a person to get a mortgage. So the people who have mortgages are extremely well qualified and they're going into the houses with equity. So I don't think there's gonna be any fire sales for people who are in a position, because if I own the house right now, I would do a calculation. It's like, okay, if I could sell my house for X, but, wait a minute, it's gonna be very hard for me to get another house. 
I might as well just sit tight with my low interest rate mortgage and just just wait it out. If I don't if I don't have to move out of state, I didn't have a job offer in another state. I would just pretty much sit tight. And that's what I think a lot of people are doing, because, you know, for the folks who've locked in at these two point eight percent interest rates, they, they know that if they go out and buy another home, they're going and they sell their home. They're selling that low interest rate and they're going to enter into these high interest rates. So I really see a lot of people just sitting still and not making any moves. But 2023, the year of perhaps the recession, because I'm looking at what is happening because uh, the real estate trap, he was funny. The real estate marketing department, um, you will not see hardly any videos on YouTube and Instagram where people are talking about they've lost money. There's one video, there's four videos here on YouTube, one by Shelby Church talking about how our Airbnb lost money. And there was a guy in the Airbnb space who actually did a video as a response talking about things that she could do to improve her listing. Uh, I don't think that, you know, Shelby, if you know who Shelby is, she's a YouTuber. Um, she's pretty good as a YouTuber. One point, almost two million subscribers. And she actually had this place professionally done. And I don't think swapping out her pictures is going to do anything to improve her occupancy rate. The reason that her Airbnb is losing money is the economy, stupid. It's not anything that she's done. You know, th this is one of the things that I consistently see is if you can make some tweaks or you could adjust your mindset. Um, here's the thing. People don't have money. And this impacts, and she has a very expensive rental. It's like 450, 500 bucks per night. So that automatically knocked out a lot of people right there. And then when you just look at where the economy is going, Walmart, inventory, warehouses are bursting at the seams. Amazon, same to situation. So the economy is moving rapidly into a bad, bad, a worse situation, a worse situation. So as the real estate trapper said, you will you will not. Matter of fact, Grant Cardone is going on steroids with the marketing of his real estate um, training. I literally he's got four or five different commercials running in rotation. And you have a lot of people who are going to get sucked into the real estate market and they're going to be an unsophisticated real estate investor and they're going to lose money. Now, just like I have literally, I will say this, I am the only YouTuber who assiduously said, do not buy crypto because I'm the one that said it was going to crash. And right now, and listen to me. This just the beginning. Bitcoin and all cryptos are going to go lower. And, <clears throat> you know, I put out some information and I need to be really clear about it. During uh, there were certain big companies that are still around. They were the biggest companies during the dot com era, GE. And many of these companies, if you would do their research, they have not hit their stock market highs from 30 years ago. This is what I mean, that they don't come back. And some of these cryptos not coming back. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, 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 crypto's coming back. Once again, I want you to understand that crypto was conceived in this 11 year bull market. We, have, we don't have a 20 year track record for crypto or a 100 year track record like we do for the stock market. And many of these cryptos are never coming back. And there is a good chance that Bitcoin can go to zero and utterly collapse. 
I am the only YouTuber that is saying this because once again, I don't make my money from YouTube. I don't make my money from sponsorships. So I can sit here and tell you the truth. Right now, it's about to get funky. And if you want to go ahead and roll the dice and invest in crypto, do what you want. Do what you want. But I have a feeling that many of you will live to regret making these decisions because right now there's a lot of smart, sophisticated people in this FTX fiasco. There was institutional money that's lost and guaranteed that all the institutions are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. I guarantee you. Going forward, institutions are going to be looking at crypto way differently, way differently. But hey, you know what you can, you, you know, you, you know, you can do what you want. You can do what you want. But I would be really interested in knowing how many of these homes that are owned by corporations and real estate investors versus actual homeowners. You know, normal people who own a home. I really want to know what that number is, because what has happened is there's been an explosion in real estate investment. Um, the number of people who've been investing in real estate has quadrupled. And it would be interesting to know who or how many of these homeowners are actually individuals versus corporations or real estate investors.